Hi, my name is Karen, and I will be going over IC50 in this um, SI video. So first, let's start with the definition. Um, you may remember this slide because it's from your first PowerPoint, um, and in the red box, you can see that IC50 describes the concentration of inhibitor required for an enzyme's activity to be diminished by half. So essentially, a smaller IC50 means that you have less of, say, a drug to inhibit the enzyme. Um, this is also from your PowerPoint. Uh, Dr. Haworth went over how these data were collected, so I'm not going to repeat that. Instead, I'm going to re-emphasize uh, the main points of these graphs. So on the left here, uh, the data was comparing different IC50 values, and there was a lot of variation and that implies that the enzyme affinity is changing over time. But that actually can't be the case because it's impossible. Um, an enzyme's affinity shouldn't be changing, um, which most likely means that there's a lot of experimental error. And the whole point of this is if you have an IC50 value and comparing it to another IC50 value um, within 10 times of it, um, you should be careful with saying that they are definitely different so for example, if you have an IC50 value of 20 micromolar for drug A and then an IC50 value of 30 micromolar for drug B, it is not actually certain that drug A is more potent than um, drug B is as an inhibitor. And then uh, this graph on here, um, oftentimes you may be given a Ki value, which represents the equilibrium constant of dissociation of an enzyme inhibitor complex. And you may uh, see how they are, KI and uh, IC50 are really similar. And so these researchers observed a ratio of 2.3, and this ba basically means that KI is about half of the value that IC50 is. And now I'm going to go over an example that I actually had on my midterm, or my exam last year. Um, and the best way to answer any of Dr. Howard's questions is to first read the question, understand the data, and then go through each answer choice and figure out which is correct. So let's do that. Sorry. So the question asks about using IC50 data to compare evil calcet to compound 7. So let's look at the data. So I highlighted in yellow um, evocalcet and then compound 7 and the IC50 values. So when you compare evocalcet and compound 7, you can see what's different is this air, what's on this aromatic portion, which I'm going to highlight in red. And then that is the same thing as right there. Um, so there's a carboxylic acid on the vocalcet and then an OCF3 on compound 7. And then we look at the IC50 values, and then we can see that um, compound 7 has a lower IC50 value by um, about 30 times and is therefore a more potent inhibitor. So because it's a better inhibitor, that means that compound 7 has better binding. Okay, now let's go through the answer choices. So this asks about whether the binding site in the calcium sensing receptor is completely filled by a tightly bound hydrophobic region of um, evocalcet. And looking at evocalcet in the enzyme, um, which is right here, Uh, you can you can see that it's mostly hydrophobic. Um, there are a lot of carbons in green and not much anything of anything else. And now that we've and we've already compared evil calcet with compound seven, and we've observed that evil calcet is not actually as good as an inhibitor. Um, so that means it's not likely um, very tightly bound to the receptor. And the three fluorines on compound 7 um, actually like fill up more space, so there's actually more room for interaction um, that evil calcet is not really achieving. So this is probably not your answer, and let's look at the next answer choice.
So this is asking about whether greater rigidity is favorable. And if we look at compound 5, um, there's one less carbon um, than the evil calcite has over there. And as we can see from the IC50 value, uh, it's much higher, um, which means that the compound 5 has a much worse interaction. Um, and because it's more rigid, that means that greater rigidity is not favorable for binding to the calcium sensing receptor. Now this is asking whether adding a negative charge would be helpful with binding. Um, there are no ionic interactions shown, so the data cannot support this answer. So by process of elimination, this has to be the answer, but let's go through why it's correct. Um, so the binding site for the hydrophil hydrophobic region accommodates mo molecules with different orientations. This makes sense because if you have different positions that can be added to the aromatic ring, like including meta and para groups, um, uh, like they would also have low IC50s. So what I mean by this is that compound 7 has a meta group on it and an IC50 value of um, 1.4 nanomolars. And then if we look at compound 10, um, it has a comparable IC50 value of 7.8. Recall what I said earlier about having to be over 10 times to actually be notably different. And then compound 10 has a para um, group on it. So um, this binding site is pretty accommodating, and this is the best answer ch choice. Okay, thank you for listening, and please let me know if you have any questions.